Welcome to the Mayo Clinic Cardiovascular Continuing Medical Education Podcast. Join us each week to discuss the most pressing topics in cardiology and gain valuable insights that can be directly applied to your practice. Hello, I'm Dr. Steve Kopetsky, a preventive cardiologist at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. It's a great pleasure to be sitting today with Dr. Francisco Lopez Jimenez, who's the chair of the Division of Preventive Cardiology at Mayo. Welcome, Francisco. Thank you, Steve. We'll be talking today about family history of early atherosclerotic disease. Francisco, when do we need to worry about family history of, of atherosclerotic disease? Yeah, good question, because you know a lot of people have family history of atherosclerotic disease, and, and for, for those uh, who don't have a medical background, that includes history of heart attacks, history of strokes, or uh, history of any blockages in the body's arteries due to uh, cholesterol plaques. So we, we have to be concerned whenever family history uh, occur in uh, people that are not necessarily too old. And the, the definition is uh, any family history of, of, of heart attacks in men uh, younger than 55 for women younger than 65 would be considered significant. But but it is, is, it is even more concerning when there are several family members who have been affected, particularly first degree, meaning parents, uh, siblings, children. Uh, if, there, if there is more than one, that generally conveys a higher risk uh, overall. And the most concerning piece of the family history, uh, one that has to be taken very, very seriously, is when the family history includes uh, sudden death when uh, dad or mom or a brother or sister dies suddenly and, and it, it, it was found that it was due to a, to a obstructed coronary artery. So the, again, uh, any situation when the family history occurs at early age is significant, but the more, the worst, and also if there is history of sudden death, that should be uh, considered pretty seriously and, and, and consider other steps. Very good. So is there a particular gene that runs in these families uh, that, that we should test for that causes atherosclerotic disease? Uh, well, indeed, there are some genes that have been implicated uh, causing atherosclerosis, but uh, the, the problem is that uh, they cannot explain every single case of uh, early atherosclerosis in families. Indeed, the best models we have trying to uh, assess the risk based on some genetic uh, panels can only tell us uh, risk uh, increases in the order of 60%, 50%, 70% at most, which is good information, but but uh, is not all we need because, for example, there are some risk factors that will give you a risk in the order of 200% or 300%, like smoking or, or central obesity. So uh, I think we're making some progress identifying genetic markers, but uh, we are not there yet. Um, we, we do this in some situations when there is a very strong familial trait of, of, of atherosclerosis, but uh, in most part, we actually look for other things. So you're saying that uh, the genes are important, but lifestyle can sometimes trump the, the your genetics. They're both important. What? Uh, so when do you order genetic testing on these patients? I, I will do that when uh, family history uh, on 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 close relatives was not in the setting of other uh, uh, risk factors that will explain that. For example, when they say, well, my dad had a heart attack at uh, the age of 53, was diabetic, a heavy, heavy smoker, uh, severely obese, I, I will probably not do a genetic testing. But you know, in a situation where, where there are several family members with, with premature uh, coronary disease or atherosclerotic disease, and, and, and there is no um, uh, there are not so many risk factors to explain. I, I think that that would be a, a situation where I would order that. Now, now those uh, genetic tests uh, are not available everywhere, so it's, it's something also to be mindful that uh, that uh, that there are different types of genetic uh, uh, panels, and and the commercial ones uh, might show you different degrees of, of accuracy. 
So when you approach a patient then with a family history of disease and you rule, uh, you say that they do have a lot of risk factors in the family, so it may not be a genetic thing. What if it is genetic? What's your approach with them? The first thing is to, to make the patient aware that uh, they, are, they have an increased risk for, for cardiovascular events. Uh, with or without genes, we know that family history uh, increases the risk for, uh, for events independent of anything else. So I think uh, at the very least to be aware that they have an increased risk. Uh, the second thing is to, to check for factors that might explain that. For example, um, obviously we have to do the basic testing like cholesterol and, and, and we know that some, family, some families have a lot of heart attacks in the pedigree or in the uh, genealogy, but, uh, but, but, but they actually have a very high cholesterol. So those are the uh, patients that have familiar hypercholesterolemia. Uh, in some situations, the cholesterol might not be too high, but they might have uh, other abnormalities like lipoprotein A, uh, for example, that uh, might run in families and might explain some um, genetic predisposition. Uh, I think it's also uh, important to uh, do some additional testing. And if they have significant family history of early atherosclerosis, I think it's reasonable to do a coronary calcium scan or a carotid ultrasound to rule out plaques in the carotids. Um, uh, certainly, we have to be very aggressive managing cardiovascular risk factors. Uh, I will encourage the patients, all these patients, to engage in, a, in, a, in an active lifestyle, to have a healthy, a heart-healthy diet, and to have the, uh, the blood pressure and cholesterol and glucose um, in good control. And you mentioned a uh, uh, scan for cryo ultrasound. How do we treat uh, those other arterial beds differently, the peripheral arterial disease or the cerebrovascular disease? like we treat coronary disease? Many things are actually very similar. Um, the, the approach would be to be very uh, aggressive managing cholesterol, meaning that uh, uh, we, ha we have to keep the cholesterol in, in excellent control. And they will have to follow a healthy diet, be active, exercising regularly, uh, sleeping well, being sure that they don't have a sleep apnea, being sure that they don't have uh, um, uh, hypertension, and if they do, to have the blood pressure under control. So, uh, uh, but, but it's, it's a good point that, that we have to go beyond, we, we have to look beyond the heart. And, and the best window we have so far is the, the carotids, but um, there is actually some interesting research showing that we can even look at the femoral veins to look for plaques. Uh, femoral veins actually develop plaques way uh, sooner than the carotids. So it's something that we don't do in clinical practice, but I, I, I hope that that's uh, something that might change in the future. Oh, very interesting. So you've told us what we should do with these patients. Anything we should not do with a patient uh, with a family history of early atherosclerotic disease? Oh, certainly. So, you know, it, it is disappointing when, or, or, or discouraging when, when a patient says, well, you know, my dad had a heart attack, my mom had a heart attack, my aunts, my grandpa. So, many family members, and they say, well, you know, I, I, I know that it's going to be my turn soon, so I just don't worry about it. So, you know, I think it's, it's, it's uh, important not to feel that they are uh, destined to have a heart attack just because family members had it, because that creates some degree of inaction. And I think it's important to recognize that we can actually do many things to prevent those heart attacks. So uh, so one thing is, is not to feel that they're just destined to have coronary disease, that they can actually change that. Um, the second thing is, I will actually uh, discourage those patients to engage in a, in a very, very competitive exercise program or a very serious, like a triathlon, if they are not physically active uh, and if they haven't had any medical clearance. And the reason is because, especially if there is family history of, of um, sudden death, uh, they, they have to have some, some testing to be sure that they don't have anything going on. Um, and, and the last thing is I, I will discourage patients to, do, to have a... a uh, coronary angiography with uh, CT or any angiography. 
And this is a practice that I don't think is, is the right thing to do. I think there are many other tests that ha have to be done before considering a, a CT angiogram of the coronary arteries because uh, we don't really know what the meaning is when, when we find some minor things. And actually, some patients might be devastated finding out that they have a tiny branch of the coronaries that has 50% uh, obstruction, which is, you know, in many cases, will not necessarily change the way we treat that patient. Well, that's, that's great advice, uh, Francisco. So to summarize, the genes are important, but lifestyle is maybe extremely important. Uh, everything is important, of course, but uh, it's not a fait accompli if you have a family history of early disease, you can modify your lifestyle to hopefully prevent or reduce the chances of having that. So thank you for joining us today, Francisco. A real pleasure to have you here. Thank you, Steve. Thank you for joining us today. Feel free to share your thoughts and suggestions about the podcast by emailing cvselfstudy at mayo.edu. Be sure to subscribe to the Mayo Clinic Cardiovascular CME podcast on your favorite platform and tune in each week to explore today's most pressing cardiology topics with your colleagues at Mayo Clinic.